This is Lady Rachel, and I'm here at the Las Vegas Medical Cannabis Institute with cannabis breeding extraordinaire, DJ Short. Welcome, brother. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Tell me a little bit about DJ Short. Why do they call you DJ? Are you spinning some DJ tunes in nightclubs and stuff like that? No, not really. I'm a musician. I do make music for myself, but in essence, the name came from my name is Daniel John, and I go by DJ for short. Wonderful. All right, now that we got that clear, what, what kind of music do you like, by the way? I like all music. I like uh, a modern right now. The genre that's piquing my interest is mashups. What, what is mashups? Uh, taking other music that we're all familiar with and layering it on top of one another. So you have this familiarity of the, of the music um, coming in several directions at once. And it's, uh, I like it. I think it's uh, got quite a ways to go. Wonderful. DJ Short is best known for his world-renowned strain, the Blueberry. I don't know if you guys have tried the blueberry, but it's my favorite strain. And I'm not just saying that because you're sitting next to me. It's fruity, it's beautiful, it's smooth. I just love it. Um, tell me a little bit, as a breeder of cannabis, um, in what direction do you want to see this industry go? Well, I support legalization um, first and foremost. I mean, we have to come out of the, the dark ages with all of this. and. It, it's just so iffy. I mean, there, there's, it's such a gray area right now. So many things remain to be seen. This is untested. Um, one way I look at it, we're being given an opportunity here that human beings have never really had. We're um, being offered a fully developed industry that requires really no marketing. Um, it's, it's just plug and play, ready to go. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how it all finally pans out. Absolutely. Um, tell me a little bit on how you started getting into the whole breeding industry. Yeah, I was quite young. I was in my teens and, and suffering the teenage angst that most of us go through. I need weed and I ain't got no money. Well, I was no, just in a state of depression at the time, uh, you know, the home trauma life, parents divorcing, growing up in Detroit, and I found Herb, and once I found Herb, it was just a no-brainer. I mean, I knew what I wanted to do and pursued it from that point on. Now, when you look at breeding today, what differences do you see in breeding versus when you first started? Well, when I first started, I was working almost entirely with land races, uh, pure sativa, uh, pure indica. Nowadays, most of the breed work is involving already developed hybrids that people either cross with themselves or out with other things um, and, and try relabeling them. That's the biggest difference, I think. It's really the same thing, though. It's pollen to the ovum, make a seed, mature the seed, sprout it, grow it out, see what you end up with. So you've basically seen a lot more uh, land species when you started, for, and now it's more hybrids. Yeah, it's just about everything on the market now is a hybrid, um, some form of cross between indica and sativa. There really are very few pure uh, uh, strains. Uh, and just on the technical side, the main difference between an indica and a sativa is flowering time. The sativa come from the tropics, the indica come from outside of the tropics. Uh, the sativa can take forever to finish and the indica finish uh, very quickly. This man knows his stuff. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about how you feel about legalization, why it should happen, why it should not happen. And yeah, I support it fully. I, I, it's just so ridiculous that this has gone on as long as it has. One of my main talking points I'd like to share with everybody to feel free to use as talking points is, is this, simply, this is the safest substance known to human beings. And you can qualify that statement by backing it up with, name something safer. You can drink enough water to kill yourself. We don't have a... I just read an article this morning that talked about how sugar, even sugar, a Snickers bar is more dangerous than marijuana. Yes, and this is true. So, you know, when was society going to catch up and realize why are we regulating this at all? And it's beneficent. It has all of these great beneficial, great beneficial potential 
So yeah, I support legalization fully. Uh, and I know there's a lot of, of quibbling about wording of ballot measures, and I agree, you know, things need to be done right, but I'm not going to vote against any ballot measure to legalize cannabis. We can work out the incidentals later on. Just get us to the point where, it, the, particularly the mom and pops, the small uh, producers have a level playing field and we'll be able to afford you know, fixing things ourselves. Uh, so yes, I support legalization fully and, and full-on legalization too. Awesome. Um, when you think about cannabis and cannabis celebrities, who is the first cannabis celebrity that comes to your mind? All right, well, Tommy Chong. But I, uh, of course, we all know Tommy Chong, but I want to give a shout out to somebody by the name of Mez Mesro, who's no longer with us. He uh, wrote a book back in the 19, it was published in the 1940s called Really the Blues. He was a pot dealer in Harlem, among other places. He was a jazz musician. He taught Gene Krupa to play the drums. He was uh, Louis Armstrong's pot dealer. Um, and it's a fascinating read, and I, I think in terms of our history, it's, it's fun as well, just to realize we're not alone. This has been going on for a long, long time. Uh, so, it, Mez Mesro as well. Mez Mesro, let's look up this man's book. Well, um, we are encouraging youngsters from, from the ages of 17 all the way to maybe not so youngsters, 40, to get up off their couches in 2016 and smoke the vote. Can you help me reach out to these people and what would you say to them about voting and how important it is to smoke the vote in 2016? It's very important. Um, you know, a lot of people tend to think that voting doesn't make a difference and in a lot of ways perhaps it doesn't, but I've been political my whole life and I know this one fact is true. <clears throat> the government best serves us when we have a high voter turnout because they know that we're possibly upset, but we are... We're serious. We're serious, exactly. We're serious. So I think it's just good to send the message to them all the time. When they get a low voter turnout, they think, hey, we can do whatever we want. Um, so yes, get up, get out, and vote. I've uh, been speaking at Hash Bash in Ann Arbor, and my themes there is, I was going there when I was 15 years old. I was going to Hash Bash, and here I am back now 40 years later, and I tell the young people, I say, look, back then it was us, teenagers, people in our 20s, we changed the world. We stopped a war. We ousted a corrupt president, and we did it from here. You can too. And you have a resource that we didn't have, several resources. Number one, the little phones with all the information on it. And number two, you've got us. We're here to help you. We've been through it. We didn't have elders when we were doing this back in the 70s, which is when I was doing the people in the 60s as well. But you have that resource now. And I think that it is young people who make the difference. Who, who It's your world, all right? make it what you want to make it and this is how we do it one of the ways is you get out and you vote you be active that was incredibly powerful thank you so much for being here with us today and for sharing all of this incredible information with us we look forward to seeing you very soon we look forward to what dj short has to come i can't wait to be your guinea pig and uh we'll see you very soon so this is Lady Rako and DJ Short here at the Medical Cannabis Institute Las Vegas encouraging you to smoke the vote in 2016.